The people in town hunted there because that was a good place one time. I don't know the um, native name for that area, but Harewood was their first stop when they were going hunting. I remember him saying that was where they stopped to the rest. Five acres, or as we now typically would call it, Harewood, is the earliest planned agricultural community in Western Canada. It has huge historic significance. Harewood was the food basket, the bread basket for Nanaimo. We must save some remnant of that so that we can learn how important it was to the people who lived here. Growing Opportunities, our nonprofit co-op, has been at the Five Acre Farm for the last four years. It's one of the last Five Acre Farm parcels left in the city of Nanaimo. The landowner approached us to see if the land that he'd had um, fallow for quite a number of years could be used for f agricultural food production. He was interested in partnering okay. with us. Ready? Yep. We've been working with farms in the area since 2007. I was raised on a farm, and so uh, I was always interested in agriculture, but didn't really appreciate it at the time. For me, it was hard work. And uh, I think over the years, I realized it was something I really enjoyed. You know, planting seeds, watching them grow, harvesting, making good food from the foods that I grew. And so it just built from there. So I was one of the founding members of Nanaimo Community Gardens and Nanaimo Food Share, and just kept showing people how to farm and making farming and growing vegetables accessible to people. Well, my favorite thing about working here is the experience. I mean, this is actually my, the first time I got paid employment. This is actually my first real job, and I love it. Nanaimo Food Share has used this land for employability skills. So we work with people of all abilities, and then they come here and they learn some of the skills connected to growing food. Craig Evans helped me to learn how to do all the stuff on the farm. It feels really good because we grow plants and give it out to people who are in need of food because they don't have enough money for the food. I did some planting and watering. We planted broccoli, carrots, some, some kale, some lettuce, some zucchinis, tomatoes. <laughs> I did chickens. They were almost packing up my feet. I uh, gave them some food from the plants. I gave them to the chickens, collected some eggs. And Lots of people helping the farm. Where can I go? Just go wherever you like. Right here. How about right there? Oh, yeah. Very nice. It's really hard for an individual to get involved in agriculture. You know, the price of land is so expensive, and there's not really a lot of farmers. A hundred years ago, 40% of the people in the community would have been active in agriculture, and today it's less than 4%, probably closer to two. When you have such a low proportion of the population who are actively involved, then maintaining those skills is a, is a challenge because people don't have that experience in their families and in their backgrounds. And with increasing development, which we see all around this specific property, it's really apparent that there's less and less land available for us to actually grow food. Anybody that knows history of Nanaimo, they know that a native person showed James Douglas and his people the coal, and that started everything. Uh, the British ships came up here, explored, looked around at it, and said, yes, really interesting. Uh, they told the leader then, 
name of uh, Soknastan. Let's make a treaty for these Nanaimo people. They want to secure the area, take the land. Eh? That's the purpose of making a treaty. The Douglas Treaty was signed December the 23rd, 1854. And that began the big rush over here for coal and industrialization with Nanaimo. In the last quarter of the 19th century, coal mining in the Nanaimo region was dominated by two firms, the Vancouver Coal Mining and Land Company, which was managed by Samuel Robbins, and Robert Dunsmuir's Wellington Collieries. These two companies had completely different philosophies with regards to industrial relations, and this shaped the development of Nanaimo. Sam Robbins' history in Nanaimo is overshadowed by the Dunsmuir family, but the 20 years that he spent in Nanaimo had a big impact on not only the economy of the community because of the importance of coal mining, but also on the development of five acres. For some individuals, working in agriculture it can be very therapeutic. When you plant seeds, grow plants, water them, care for them, tend them, it gives you an outlet for your care and concern. And there's many examples of people who've come and worked at our farm and uh, learned how to show up and do a job. It just grounds them, you know, literally. You get to enjoy doing work that people enjoy you doing, which is not something I've really experienced too much working other jobs. I mean, there can be a lot of boring stuff that happens on the farm, but selling it at the market is really where you get your reward. So you get to interact with the customers and see how much they appreciate what you're doing. It's honorable to get to do something like that. Kicking So Craig's gonna just demo a few bunches, okay? And then you are going to bunch some kale that will go out into the good food boxes. I think if everybody picks, you know, like eight or so bunches, we'll have enough. And so the key is pull the leaf down off the kale, and then you just kind of wrap that, and there's your bunch of kale. That'll go into the food box. What the Good Food Box does is allows access to everyone in the community to healthy foods, regardless of what their income might be. It comes the second Wednesday a month when my funds are really, really low and I have hardly any food, and there's one way of eating healthy. The other piece that's really important is the fact that it builds community. People come on the Good Food Box Day, they volunteer and they contribute. I helped to load boxes into the van and, and helped uh, lift produce onto the tables to disperse for the boxes. It also creates connections in the community that wouldn't normally exist, so it's an opportunity to participate in something that's completely inclusive of all abilities at all incomes. In the Good Food Box, we have a newsletter. We're letting people know, like, this is probably a new food to you. And if it is, then here's a recipe, and here's a way that different people might want to use that. I go home and cook. It all depends what's in the box. Sometimes I make salads, sometimes I make soup. And sometimes I cook with Anita, cooking out of the box, and I learn new skills. We're partnered with the Nanaimo Community Kitchens. They have a cooking out of the box program that happens the day after the Good Food Box comes out. At Food Share, we've also had seniors cooking groups and we've done the same thing with them. So seniors have an opportunity to try those new foods. There's also been the Seniors Engagement Program where seniors have come here and they've done a pollinator assessment and documenting the variety of different pollinators who are part of the growing season here. 
What we're finding is it's so important to be able to talk to seniors. Being able to tap into that wealth of knowledge has been so important, both from an inclusion perspective in our community and that whole piece around community building. My grandfather was Batiste Johnny, and he worked in the coal mines for 15 years. Him and Harry Henry were one of the first ones that worked in there. It was our neighbor, and um, there was a lot of um, prejudice. And Harry Henry, his buddy, couldn't even speak English when he went down there. What he told me was that uh, Nanaimo was a boom town then. Always something new going on, new buildings going up. Sam Robbins came to Nanaimo in 1884, and he stayed here till about 1903. He was employed by the Vancouver Coal Mining and Land Company, which is based in London. And they sent him out as a troubleshooter because things weren't running as well as they'd like. Sam Robbins was much more focused on the welfare of his employees than his competitor, James Dunsmuir, was. In 1887, Nanaimo suffered its worst disaster, 150 people killed in a horrific accident at the number one mine. And as an example of the kind of benevolence and stewardship that Mr. Robbins felt about the town, he made sure that widows had pensions, that they had life tenure in their homes, that those of them that chose to go back to England or wherever their homeland was, he ensured that that happened. He had a real sense of the overall welfare for the community. Robbins actively supported unions. This form of management based on negotiation, compromise, and consensus building, rather than the confrontational style of Dunsmuir, proved profitable for the Nanaimo collieries. James Dunsmuir was adversarial. He refused to recognize unions. He also preferred to own the property where his miners lived. He could control access to the town. He could, of course, evict people if they went on strike. He was an absolute ruler over his domain. Which is obviously a very different approach than Sam Robbins, who was developing land to sell to miners so that they could be more independent and a bit more self-sufficient. Mining was very boom and bust because it was dependent on world markets. Sometimes they got good money for their coal. Other times they didn't. They'd have to lay men off. And that was the motivation for developing Harewood, so that during those bust times, people would have some way to at least produce their own food and perhaps even sell it. Part of our transition towards adapting to the challenges of climate change is by creating resilient local food systems. This used to be the way we lived, where the community supported the farm and the farm supported the community. The farm was the center of the community and we need to bring it back. Right now on Vancouver Island, the number one crop being grown is hay. We're importing 95% of our food. This is a well-known thing and there is a big opportunity to transition those hay fields into food growing spaces. One of the biggest bottlenecks right now is lack of farmers. You grab it at the very base of the stem and you just push down and it comes off. I really need these farming spaces to bring my students to and help them become aware that farming is a job, it's a lifestyle, it's a life skill and farming is an option. Doing a variety trial really helps to establish what's the best variety for your growing conditions and for your market. We've got leaks of 11 different varieties. And so what we're going to do is go through and then do an assessment for any signs of disease. How many have rust? I think all of them. So what exactly is that? It's a virus. Okay. So yeah, the majority have rust. Most of the seeds available to the general public are hybrid seeds. They're highly specialized, but usually developed in chemical growing environments. And so those seeds often don't do as well when you're growing in an organic growing environment. And so we're partnered with About a Seed Initiative and have done a number of different seed trials to help develop organic seeds for organic growers. And so you can feel how dry 
that is. Yeah. And so this is ready to pick. We do a lot of kale and carrot seed production and breeding here, and we're actively working to produce plants that will grow well in a future climate for this area. Bend it gently and then just shake it in here and then a lot of the seed will fall out. VIU has been a major partner for the farm as well and so VIU students from all different departments come here, learn about growing food, and students have been using some of their community planning skills, doing assessments of the use of the farm, and have been looking at the health of the water systems. The water in the wetland on the Five Acre Farms actually flows into the creek. So the wetland on Five Acre Farms is actually a tributary to the tributary for the Chase River. We found that there was juvenile coho and rainbow as well as some um, three-spined stickleback and crayfish using the creek up until Nova Street um, from where it enters the Chase River around 7th. Our part of the project is to research the environmental, agricultural and historical values of this area to try to um, gain community recognition about uh, food security in Harewood as well as to protect this lot from potential future urban development. There's not a lot of those original five acre lots left in Nanaimo. I believe there's only around three of them, and this is one of them. So it's not just environmentally significant, it's historically significant as well. So we're getting to the question uh, did we have any association with five acre lot people in Samuel Robbins? My answer, no, we didn't have much to do with the people back near the mountain, they called it then, because we're told to keep out of the way of industrialization. In the 1890s, Sam Robbins had property cleared in what is now called Harewood. He had the property subdivided into mostly five acre lots. He divided land and leased them or sold these lots to usually British skilled miners. It started out with a lease of $2.50 a year. The requirements were that you could not be a local business person, so he wasn't into land speculating. He really wanted to create opportunities for miners. You had to fence the property, clear it, and you had to build a house. He made sure that there would be a school there by setting aside land. He made sure that there was church land set aside. And he encouraged the development of what we would now call small-scale mixed farming in the area. It encouraged settlement, it encouraged cultivation of the land and local food production. They could have a cow and some chickens and a garden and feed themselves. So by having a piece of property where you could have a market garden, you could not only provide for yourself and your family, but you might have a little bit extra that you could sell or trade with a neighbor. We're gonna pick these jalapenos today grown three and a half miles from downtown Nanaimo. They're gonna be on the menu probably tomorrow at many of the restaurants making salsa, looking mm. for fresh jalapenos. It's not shipped 2,000 kilometers up from Central or South America. So each tomatillo gets checked to see if it's a good one. Will seed save um, any ones that have split and the ones that are beautiful we can sell on the open market. We have a group here working with us on the farm from the West program at VIU Workplace Essential Skills Training and they also run the farmers market up at VIU. It's a perfect training ground because you'll get a little bit of public exposure they can do the sales do the math make change. There's nowhere on campus to buy fresh produce before we came here. Everyone's stretched for time, and to be able to come 
in between classes, pick up something that you can take home and cook up your dinner with. It just makes sense. Do you have bags for these? Absolutely. Are they all real ripe or is they there They are any really... pretty ripe, yep. So today is our weekly Saturday market and our volunteer day. And so everybody's welcome to come by the five acre farm, learn more about our project and learn about the foods that we're growing here. And we've got fruit and veggies for sale. These are still good? They're fine. Okay. Yes, they are. Thank you. Okay. I thought they expired today. Yeah, that's what I thought too. Oh, no, you're okay. It's uh, one of two markets that we do in the week. We've been at the Bastion Square for the summertime, which is just finishing now. And um, we are now going to be here until the end of October. Having people come down to visit the farm and making that direct exchange really adds to the connection between consumer and farmer. What the people are buying here today was picked this morning or last night. So it's better for the farmer, it's better for the consumer. When they go home, they know where it's come from. They've seen the ground that it grows in. compare the legacies left by Sam Robbins and James Dunsmuir, it's quite dramatic as far as impact on Nanaimo. Sam Robbins' influence can be felt to this day. He set aside the land for what was then a cricket field but is now called Robbins Park. Robbins Park was dedicated to Sam Robbins on his retirement in 1903. A photo was taken at the dedication ceremony and I think that it really does say a lot about his position in the community that so many people came out to wish him well and thank him for his contributions to Nanaimo. He initiated the Millstream Park, which became Bowen Park, in 1895, but the paperwork wasn't done till a couple of decades later, but it was his intention that the community would have a large, essentially a wilderness park to enjoy and that should be retained for all time. One of his interests was gathering plants from different parts of the world. When sea captains would come through, he would ask them on their next voyage to bring him a seedling or a seed from some of their foreign ports. So over time, Robin's Gardens, his own property on Esplanade, developed this very almost international exotic look. It had trees from all over. Considering Nanaimo's age as a town that was initially developed in the early 1850s, there are remarkably few large trees around. The trees that Mr. Robbins planted are really, really important. There were a number of areas that had long rows of Lombardi poplars. There were some rows of black locusts. There's some really stunning London plane trees between Halliburton and Irwin, and we also believe that Mr. Robbins planted those. The Dunsmere plot in the Nanaimo Cemetery is really the only trace of the family here. There's a one block long street called Dunsmere Street behind City Hall, but there's no legacy here. There's no library that he endowed or even a park. It's nothing. If you want to see the Dunsmere's legacy, go to Hatley Castle and go to Craig Derrick Castle. If you want to see Samuel Robbins' legacy, visit Nanaimo. You know, it's with a bit of uh, sadness that we're moving off this property and farming somewhere else for uh, the 2019 season. Alan's asked us to leave because of his own uh, plans for the farm. And we are now partnering with John Klein, who has the old Westwood farm. So that farm is the oldest farm in Nanaimo. And we'll be working there to help restore that agricultural land. The Westwood Farm is located right next door to the city of Nanaimo's East Wellington Park, which is in the Agricultural Land Reserve. And we're looking at ways that we can utilize part of that property
for community agriculture as well. When you plant seed and it sprouts, it's amazing. And when you plant it in the ground and it grows, it's amazing. And then when you eat it, it's amazing. And then when the soil gets better, it's amazing. And year after year, you experience these moments of wonder and these little miracles that happen on the farm. And that brings me so much joy and happiness. It's selling. It's selling. Alan allowed us to be here for four years, and it was a gift to be able to share this land with him. And the opportunity still exists for this land to eventually be a community farm. Oh, thank you kindly. We're working behind the scenes with other community members, looking at sources of funding to ensure this farm remains a farm in the future. To me, it seems a wonderful opportunity that, if it's not taken, will never come again, to preserve a part of our agricultural heritage and recognize it as a gem, as something unique and special to the community. I think it's a good idea, you know, for us to share with the white man the, the garden and everything. You know, grow some of those wild medicines. Our long-range vision is to put this property into a food lands trust, preserving the land for agricultural use and the ecologically valuable wetland area as wetland. People who've lived in the area for many decades have said that when they were younger they'd see salmon spawning in this little pond back here and that hasn't been observed in a long, long time and we're hoping to rehabilitate this area so that we can see it once again. We talk a lot about sustainability, but farming is actually regenerative. It's healing the problems that we are causing. It's so important for us to come together as a community and support each other, and food is the thing that has always done that. Farms bring people together. <laughs>